But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive others when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins... Your father will not forgive your sins. Shalom, Israel. This is Jediah. Um, I'm here uh, with a new video today. I wanted to talk about a, a subject that's kind of personal. Um, but when I was thinking about it, it's probably not all that personal because I'm sure a lot of people out there are going through the same thing. Um, actually, um, I was doing some research on what um, is known, I guess, in the medical society as sleep paralysis. Basically, what happens is that when you go to sleep, this happens for some people I know um, and then some people I know personally and talk with on YouTube and friends that I've had, as well as just looking at accounts of different people who put things on online about different experiences they had. Um, but it, it has to do with sleep paralysis. And for those of you who don't know, sleep paralysis is like when a person goes to sleep at night and everything is normal, you go to sleep, you, you're tired, you lay down on your bed. But at some point in the middle of your sleep, either while having a dream maybe not even having a dream, but at some point you're just sleeping and then you wake up. And when you wake up in the middle of the night, you, you can't move. No matter how hard you try, you can't move your arms, you can't move your legs, you can't, you can't even turn your head. And, but you're awake and you have like no power over your limbs, no, no way to move, um, except maybe your eyes. And in my situations, when this has happened to me, I'm still able to like turn my eyes or like turn my head slightly to the side, but it's very slow, very, very slow. It's like I'm pushing against a wall, you know, and I can't move. Um, but I'm looking into this and, um, you know, I know what it is, you know, society and the world calls it sleep paralysis. And it gives some kind of explanation about the different levels of sleep that you encounter and so forth. But it's really, a demonic attack. And so that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today was that uh, my experience with sleep paralysis. Um, and I'll tell you how it started for me. Um, and like I said, it's a little personal, um, but I'm sure a lot of people in the world are struggling with some of the same issues. You know, um, for me, it started with um, porn, going online, viewing different websites, um, you know, at the time I was involved in a marriage, which I'm no longer um, married, and the woman that I was with was not a godly woman. And actually, we had gone through some issues, and we were still living in the same house, but basically separated and not dealing with each other. And so, you know, like any other person, I guess I was feeling lonely, and then I would turn on the computer and um, we'll look at different sites. Um, and I began, you know, as I began to do this, I started not feeling good about it, especially when you look at a lot of the sites. A lot of them are just demonic and satanic. You see all kinds of stuff going on, even the names of the sites, like Evil Angel. Uh, I don't even want to get into the names of the sites, but just the names of the logos and so forth. You just look at them and you know it's, it's, it's of the devil, it's of Satan. 
So, um, like some months ago, I was reading in the word and scriptures in uh, Galatians, the fifth chapter that talks about um, the works of the flesh. And it kind of convicted me um, in Galatians, the fifth chapter in the 19th verse, it says, um, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanness and lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, and heresies. Uh, and it goes on, it says all these different things that are the works of the flesh. And like the first ones are adultery and fornication. And I would think about, you know, what Yeshua would say about adultery, even looking at a woman lustfully or uh, um, envisioning in your mind having sex uh, or, or having um, fornication with a woman um, who, who you're not married to, who you have no relationship with, no covenant with, that's, that's um, fornication. And it's uh, adultery. That's adultery in the spirit because we're desiring someone who is not for us. We're only supposed to have who God sends for us, whether it's the man or the woman. You know, the Most High has a husband for you or a wife for you. That's the person that technically, literally, that we should be with. Um, so when we're having, when we're lusting in our hearts or in, in our thoughts after somebody that is not ours, then we are committing fornication. So I was reading this and then, you know, I got, like I said, I got convicted by it and I decided to just stop. I just stopped watching um watching porn altogether and it was a uh, cold turkey you know i just said i'm not doing this anymore i don't want to i don't want, to, I don't want this i don't i don't want to desire these things and then i realized that you know if a person watches it enough it like it'll twist your 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 desires or your tastes what you look for no longer satisfies you and then you're looking for the next extreme and then the next extreme and the next extreme and before you know it you turned out you know in your mind or in your heart so like I said, I was convicted by this and I just decided to stop cold turkey. But here's what happened. Here's all right. Here's where the sleep paralysis comes into it. All right. You know, I had stopped months ago. I want to say probably like maybe five or six months ago. And uh, sometime after I had stopped, I had an interesting experience. Um, I was asleep and in the middle of my sleep, I had a dream. Um, I was inside of a house. OK. And um, like I said, when, when, when you have these dreams, when when I have them, I can't move. It's like I'm frozen. But I had this dream and I was inside of this house. This house uh, was dark inside and I was downstairs inside of the house. The house had two levels. I was on the first floor and I started hearing like weird noises and weird sounds. And ironically, my mother was in this dream. She was in the house with me. And I said, Ma, you know, um, do you hear that noise? And she was like, no, I, I didn't hear it. So I said nothing. And the second time I heard this strange sound, these strange noises in the house. And I asked my mother, I said, Ema, that's in Hebrew, is Ema. So I said, Ema, did you hear, did you hear that noise in the house? And she said, no. So that was weird. So the third time I heard something, I said, well, I know I heard something the third time. I'm going upstairs to check and see what it is. So when I went upstairs in the house, it was dark. It was just this one room, big room, dark, with just stairs that led up to it. And when I got up there, uh, there were d demons in the room. All I heard was like satanic utterances, demonic voices, and the light just filled the room. And as soon as I got up there, I got down on my knees and I started to pray because I realized that I was in a house that was filled with demons, which I'll explain with, I think that the significance of that was. So in my dream, I got down on my knees. I started to pray. I started saying, oh, Yahweh and Yehoshua, thy son's name, cast out these demons, cast them out, cast them out. And, you know, I was saying it like uh, with a loud, I was, I was shouting it. And um, when I was saying this, and it was coming out of me like I was surrounded with like a ball of light. It started uh, like a small ball and it just grew and grew and grew. And the more, the more that I called on Yeshua 
and his father, Yehoah, or Yahweh, the, the bigger and the brighter this light began to shine. So much so that um, there were no windows in his room, but wind started to blow like in a circle, like almost like a, a tornado. It was like the power of this prayer. It was like the Most High was showing me the power of prayer through this dream that where I could actually see the power of prayer. A lot of times we might pray and we don't get an answer as soon as we would like to, or it seems like nothing is taking place. But through that dream, the Most High show, was showing me that there are literally things in the spiritual realm that take place when we pray. So when I was saying this prayer and casting this demon out in Yeshua's name, uh, like I said, the light started to grow and surround the whole room and it, it, this wind started blowing. Papers were flying around this room that had no windows, no doors, nothing. So I started saying, I cast you out in Yehoshua's name. In Yeshua's name, I cast you out. And I started saying it so loud over and over again in my sleep that it woke me up in reality. And when I woke up, I was still saying the same thing that I was saying in my dream. And, you know, it was dark in the room. And I'm saying, in Yehoshua's name, I cast you out. I cast you out, unclean spirit. Get out. And as I'm saying that, like I said, it, it, it woke me up. But as I'm sitting here and making this video and you hear my voice, because I'm talking, I was saying this in reality when I woke up in my bed. But another voice was coming from my mouth. It was a demon's voice coming out of me. And uh, what I realized was that there was a demon in me that I never knew was there. And it came out of me because I stopped cold turkey watching pornography. And I kid you not, as I was saying this, I could not see it, but I felt the whole thing. I felt like uh, when a per like maybe you sit down on, on your leg for too long and you start feeling tingling in your leg and it starts spreading. I started feeling that right here in the middle of my chest. And as I started saying and I kept repeating it, I cast you out in Yehoshua's name, it was forcing whatever demon was in me to repeat the same word. So as I was saying it, the demon in me had to say the same thing and it was being cast and thrown forth out of me. But I could feel it holding on to my chest. And, and it was just like this tangling sensation and it was fight. I felt it like it was fighting for his life. And what's really strange is that it was fighting so strong like it had been there for I don't know, maybe years, a long time, because I didn't even know it was there. Um, and I'm a person who studies the word and so forth. Um, and I try to stay out of doing things that I shouldn't. Um, but yet this thing was in me and I didn't even know. You know, so uh, needless to say, I felt something holding on, grasping onto my chest. But I kept saying the same words. And Yahshua taught me the power of his name. So that's why I want to talk about the power of the name of the Most High and of His Son. Um, um, let's go to, I think, in Acts, the fourth chapter. In the book of Acts, in the fourth chapter, in the twelfth voice, twelfth verse, we see that um, Peter and John, they're talking about the power of the Messiah's name. In the twelfth verse, it says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So I'm sure this happens to a lot of people where they have this kind of attack at night in their, in their dreams and they may not know how to fight it. And so I'm here to say from personal experience and this is my personal testimony that there is real power in the name of Yahshua in the name of the Father, Yahweh, or Yehoah. There's real, it's a real weapon in the spiritual realm. And the physical realm that we live in is just a reflection of the, the spiritual realm. So we need to learn and know the power of, of the name. And like I said, this demon was cast out of me because I kept rebuking it. And then the Most High showed me later on that the symbol of that house was my body. It was my temple, you know, in which it had a spirit, a demon spirit in there that should not have been. And when there's an unclean spirit that dwells in the house, then the spirit of 
the the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Most High, does not want to, cannot dwell and occupy the same space as something that's unclean. So that 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 house represented me, my my body, and it was being cast out, um, and that's what happened. And uh, just like Christ says. Uh, when an unclean spirit is cast out of a person, it, it wanders. I think it's in the book of Luke, the 11th chapter, it says that an unclean spirit wanders around and is constantly uh, seeking a place of rest and it can't find it. So what it does, it gets seven other spirits and then comes back to you. Well, that same thing happened as well. Um, I had another dream where um, I was given a sword. This was another weird dream. I had a dream where I was given a sword, but this sword was like no other sword. It wasn't a sword from earth. It would look like something out of this this out of this world, out of this earth. And I didn't know exactly what it was. So in my dream I had found out, then I heard that there was a woman who knew who, who knew spiritual things. And if I went to her and showed her this sword that I had, that she would be able to tell me what the sword was and how to use it. So I said, okay, I'll go and see. So I went to this lady's uh, place and um, she was dressed like a, I don't know, like a spirit advisor, okay? And uh, as soon as I walked up to her door, she came to me, she approached me and she said, oh, you're here to inquire about the sword come into my room. And so I walked up to the door and I opened the door and I went, I looked when I walked inside the room and looked in it, the entire room was empty, but on the walls were eyes, all seeing eyes all over the wall. And it was, the, the room was green. The walls was green. It was like a nasty green color with eyes on the wall. And as soon as I realized that I had been tricked uh, I turned around and I punched the wall and then the door that I came into slammed by itself. It slammed shut without anyone even having to push it. The lady used the power of some spiritual power to slam this door closed behind me. So I punched it and as soon as I punched it, and like I said, there was an eye on the door too. There were eyes on the door and on the wall. As soon as I punched it, I realized where I was and I started praying immediately. So this very it is real power in prayer. So I started praying the same prayer. I cast you out in Yahshua's name, in Yehoshua's name, I cast you out. And when I started saying this and saying it very loudly, what happens is the door pops open and then this little woman transformed into who she really was, which was a demon. She had black eyes. She had sharp, razor sharp teeth and like an elongated jaw and mouth. And when she stood in the doorway, she had like some skirt on and was short, but she started screaming her jaw, like she started screaming really loud. And as she was screaming, I was shouting my prayer louder and we were, we were battling spiritually. And as I started to say more and more, I cast you out and use the name Yeshua, I started to walk towards the door, but she had some kind of power where she was sliding me back. She was sliding me backwards while I was walking, walking to the door. She was pushing me back. I was being pulled from behind by some force, you know, and I kept calling on Yeshua's name and I finally got close to the door and I reached my hand out to push her out the way and she opened her mouth to bite my hand and I woke up. So, but it was very real. And like I said, it was sleep paralysis during the whole time. I could not move. Um, but when I was able, when I did wake up after I was calling on Yeshua, I got up, I turned the lights on and I started to pray, you know, so these things come back. They came back several times after, um, letting go of this pornography, you know, and I don't know that might've been something that I have done, but everybody may have something in their life that they may need to get rid of. Or, or cut out of their lives because it's a spiritual stumbling block, a spiritual hindrance. So I just want to go real quick into the word and see what Yeshua says about that in Luke, the 11th chapter. In the 24th verse, it says, when, it, when the unclean spirit is going out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, 
and finding none, he said, if I, re I will return unto my house once I came out. So he can't find any place to rest. So let's say this spirit is a spirit of al alcoholism and the person that it's, it's cast out of is an alcoholic. This spirit now leaves that person and is wandering around looking for another person to go into. But if it's going to other people and they don't have a problem with alcohol, then it has to come back to where it's familiar with. Because it can't work out its lust or its desires in a person who is not enticed by alcohol. Another person may have a problem with gluttony, with adultery, with murder, with uh, you know fornication. It could be anything, but not alcoholism. So that demon now has to try to come back into an alcoholic and the alcoholic that it knows is you so it'll come back to you but let's see who it comes back with um the 25th uh luke eleven twenty five, and when he cometh he findeth it swept and garnished he finds that the person he came out of is living a clean life then goeth he and taketh to him and taketh to him seven other spirits more wicked than himself and they enter in and dwell there and the last state of that man is worse than the first so you have some cases, like I said, let's say it's alcohol. That person gets rid of alcoholism for a while, but then this demon will come back with seven other spirits more powerful. And that's when that person has a relapse. And when they relapse back into drinking, they usually have a, a, a worse problem than they did before. Um, because there's seven other demons that have now come with it. So in this situation, seven more spirits came back and attacked me, you know, several times. But like I said, every time I call on the name, you know, and that's and that's our deliverance. You know, I've even had a situation where uh, I was sleeping. It's another dream. I, I, I've been having several of them lately. I, I sleep. And in the middle of my sleep, I'm not by no outlets, no electric car outlets, no cords or anything like that. Just in the middle of my sleep, man, I just get jolted by like just it's undescribable. I, I jolted by like. I was electrocuted in the middle of my bed, <laughs> just shocked. And like I said, no outlets on my bed, no anything. And while I was being shocked, um, I felt like a snake slither trying to make its, make its way into my right arm and slither. I felt it slithering, trying to slither into my arm under my skin. But again, I got up and I called on a name and it went away. Um, so these are just some thoughts that I had and I wanted to share. Um, and I strongly would recommend and suggest that if people, you know, are, are into, you know, pornography and don't really see anything wrong with it, that it, it, it kills the spirit and it harms you spiritually and it defiles your body. And when your body is defiled in the same place somewhere inside us, I think in our chest, where the Holy Spirit is supposed to dwell, it's now unclean or defiled and instead of the holy spirit being in there is an unholy spirit and so um if we cleanse ourselves then these spirits have no way to dwell and the more we cleanse ourselves the more authority we will have over these spirits they fear us um they fear the people who know yahshua who know yahweh that's what they're afraid of so when we live correctly and we clean our life and we live according to the law, we keep the commandments of the Most High and the faith of Yeshua, the Messiah. When we do these things, it gives us spiritual authority even over the demons. And when enough of, us, enough of us do it, enough of the body of the Messiah, the body of Christ does this, then the Most High will really pour his spirit out on his elect. And that's when we'll actually start to do the miracles that we read about. We read about the, the disciples and the apostles of Christ casting demons out of people, healing the sick, um, being bitten by serpents and, and, and living, uh, casting out unclean spirits, opening the eyes of the blind, the ears of the deaf. Yeshua said that those who trust in him will do the same works he did and even greater. But he's only waiting for us to clean ourselves up, to clean up our act, to live and keep his word, his commandments, to live it, not just read it, but to live it. And then in living it, have faith in the Messiah, and then we will receive these spiritual gifts, these, these fruits of the Spirit, which will give us all authority um, over these demons. So, you know, that's just my experience, and I hope that, um, you know, uh, I, 
I would encourage if you have the same type of experience with sleep paralysis, which really, you know, a demonic attack, a, a, a satanic attack to, you know, post your own video and maybe attach it to this one um, and explain your experience with it, how you fought it. And for those of you who don't believe that the power, that there's power in the name of Yehoshua, of Yahweh, um, of Yehoah, I just want to go into a few scriptures really quick in the book of Psalms, in Psalms, the 20th chapter, Psalms 20 in the first verse. Yehovah hear thee in the day of trouble, the name of the God of Jacob defend thee. So the name of our God, the God of Jacob will defend us. So that's Psalms 21. I'm going to go to Psalms 44 and 5. Through thee, we will push down our enemies. Through thy name, through thy name, we will tread under them that rise up against us. So through the power of the name of the Most High God, we will stomp and tread on serpents, which are devils. And the last one is Psalms 54 and 1. Um, Psalms 54 and 1. Save me, O God, by thy name and judge me by thy strength. So save me by thy name, the name. Get used to saying the name of Yahweh, the name of Yahshua. There's real power in these names. And this is the only way we can defeat these spiritual attacks. This is the only way. There's no power or salvation in any other name. So, you know, that's my testimony, um, and I pray that it's helpful, and I pray that if you don't know Yahshua, that you come unto him now while there's still time, because we're about to enter into the tribulation period. So seek the Lord while he may be found, and with that, I want to say shalom.